For February the 5th, 2021, we talk about perception among us mods, and we ask you to pitch some video game restaurants. Welcome to Level 362. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jala Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Jala, welcome back. If you weren't back, if you weren't on next week, I was going to ask you to come back on <laughs> because it had been too long. But it worked out to where you came on now. Welcome back. Thank you. I was sort of in the middle of a, a winter storm, which yeah. to everyone in the north looks like nothing. It's like, you had how much snow? <laughs> but you know what? Like, if you live in a place that is geared for 100 plus weather, they don't have the infrastructure. The yeah. houses aren't built for it. Nothing is insulated for that kind of a thing. If uh, I, nobody knows what to do. Your, uh, boy, everything. System? Yeah. Not only, not even mentioning the the power grid itself but right. just all the the rest yeah it was a total did, nightmare did did, did did anybody <laughs> seriously to your face say oh it's not that bad <laughs> i had a couple of people go oh you want to talk about snow uh, let me that. tell you how much snow i have and i'm like okay well you live in a colder place yeah. okay it never I, snows here <laughs> for one well talk, talk to anybody so. who lives north of the ohio river on a day where it's 110 <laughs> yeah. like ask how they feel yeah. <laughs> well i mean ohio's weird because you get both both the terrible hot and the cold at the, uh, yes. like you get all of it you get all of it and like the humidity and everything you yeah. get all of it we're also but, prepared like, for all of it we got we have the salt yeah. on the roads and we have air conditioners and all the buildings and stuff i just i just mm -hmm. wanted to be as inclusive as possible mm -hmm. also yeah, fuck yeah, anybody yeah. who looks at somebody else's inclement weather and says well well look who's a no no <laughs> You're not being inclusive to that person. Well, no, that person sucks. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's kind of like, you know, when hurricanes hit here, we're prepared for it. But if a hurricane hits like North Carolina, North Carolina has no, <laughs> like they get sometimes a hurricane, but not nearly the volume that we do. So it's like, yeah, granted, there can be really huge and horrible ones like Harvey, but, you know, mm -hmm. um, just like we get them so regularly. I mean, ask Jeremy. Jeremy yeah. knows. No, no, every time. <laughs> Jeremy Greer got every hurricane this last time. Yeah, so and every, every time I was like, hey, hey, Jeremy, are you, you doing okay? You, how, how are you facing up? And then, no, it's fine. We got beer. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. We've got beer is uh, the next network t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really happy you got through that okay, the winter yeah, storm well, madness. Yeah, we, I, I have a stock of a lot of things just year round for natural disasters slash whenever something happens, like, you know, AT&T is digging and they decide to hit a water main and yeah. fuck up our water for a few days, things like that, which happen regularly because that's, that's the kind of world we live in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have that kind of stuff already. And then my parents had a generator and our generator burned up. And then we actually ended up going to my my uncle who had a spare generator oh, and buying well. it off of him yeah. <laughs> to get the power going. And my dad rewired because our house has natural gas as well. The stove is natural gas. So we mm -hmm. were able to cook still. And then the uh, AC and heat is also natural gas uh, with just the electric being for the fan and for the, like the temperature gauge. Yeah. So my dad rewired the, the parts that were electrical and to a plug and then plugged it into the generator. So we had central heat oh, cool. at that time. Wow. Of course my building, my office building where I record and also where I work all the time, um, we shut off the water to it, drained all the pipes, but we still have burst pipes in here. So I don't have any water in my building. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. So uh, that's, that's how, because there's no heat. There was no heat in here. There was heat until the power went out and yeah. so when that happened that kind of just screwed uh, my building over so uh. but you know uh we just kind of move on with life i'm sure yeah. by this point dave is like why did i move here <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> what is this <laughs> 
Well, what, what I was putting together just as just as you were describing it, I hadn't thought about the angle before that not only do you have to deal with all the terrible weather and the infrastructure that's not ready for ter- the terrible weather, but you have to deal with like all the idiot drivers who don't know what they're yeah. doing on snow. Mm-hmm. Which oh, yeah. We have that in spades mm-hmm. here and we get snow frequently. So I can only yeah. imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so, like, during that time when there was ice, I did not go on the roads at all. No. Because I don't have any experience driving on ice. I'm not about to go out there. But um, Dave had lived up north before, so he knew. And then also my dad had also lived up north for, you know, a number of years. So, you know, both of them ended up being the ones to go out and everything. Uh, there was this whole thing where they were not sure if we were going to have an agricultural crisis uh, because of the power outages and stuff to mm-hmm. where like we were going to have food shortages and things like what happened around COVID. They were saying it was going to get worse than that. But when we went out right after the storm, like Dave and I shop at a mixture of the little Sprouts Farmer's Market, Mm -hmm. um, which not very many people go to because it's a smaller store. And then to like the Hong Kong food market and the Indian grocery store down the street. So like (laughs) nobody was in there except for the Indian people and the the Asian people and us, you know, that's the the pro tip that I hear is that if the, you know, the, the shelves at every convenience store and grocery store will be picked clean, but all of the Asian and ethnic stores will be fine for some reason, because apparently white people become blind to them when they panic. Oh, yeah. And well, not only that, but they don't, though, the white people don't usually shop in those stores anyway. Right, and like right. the other people are not panicking because they've got food. <laughs> You're <laughs> so right. They're, fine. Yes. they're like, whatever. They're not overbuying because they know they can get more. Right. You know, um, so yeah, but like during COVID times, um, yeah, I also had, you know, right at first when everybody was panicking and buying everything off the shelves, yeah. I was also perfectly fine during that time because. You know, like I had a grocery store I could go to that uh, yes. had stuff. Yeah. So nice. But, so anyway, it feels like the end times all the time. Yeah, in uh, uh, 2020 still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> like, have you been doing anything cool besides just barely surviving <laughs> a winter storm? Well, I mean, like right before the winter storm and all that stuff. Um, you know, Dave and I had gone and done some stuff out and about. We went to like the art museum, um, you know, on a day when there weren't as many people and everybody was like, they, they had really good COVID guidelines in place. Mm -hmm. And basically I, I checked out all the COVID guidelines before we went anywhere. We also went to, um, right after the storm, the antique mall, which is this huge place that's like. Uh, 108,000 square feet. It's like in an old actual mall Mm -hmm. and they turn it into a giant antique center with a bunch of stalls. And so we spent like hours. We, yeah, we spent hours in there because it's so big Mm -hmm. and because there's like, nobody's ever just like storming the antique mall to begin with. (laughs) Like we had plenty of room and the people in there were very nice and they gave us water because we were walking around, you know, they gave us bottles of water, you know, just, on the house just because you know we'd spent all this time there and yeah we had fun like poking around looking at all this old stuff that you know you don't see mm-hmm. so it was great fun yeah i'd kill to go to, anti- to go to an antique mall again i need to see where one is there was a good one up north of cincinnati that i used to go to a lot but. yeah so so we did that and um you know like just went you know went to those few places and just been cooking some nice indian food and mm. <laughs> you know whatever thai food at home mostly cool. has been recent so nice yep well like i said it's good to have you back thank you how yeah. is everybody else doing yeah ben how are you doing i'm doing all right i uh over the weekend i watched a chess tournament on twitch that was a lot of fun to watch that cool. like streamers and some minor celebrities participated in and I got to hang out with a friend. So, and then it's getting lighter later now. So there's like all sorts of like mental health wins throughout the week. Yeah. So that's oh, good. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> like the effect of the earth's sun on our mood is real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Dennis, how about yeah. you? Yeah, along those lines, um, it's been warm out enough that we went out and did garage door movies. Uh, we bought a little uh, outdoor projector um, in the fall, 
and you know got to use it a couple of times uh before things got too cold but we're in that kind of very small window of time right now where it gets dark early enough to do movies while the kids are up but you know it's also warm enough that you want to be outside yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and uh yeah so that was that was delightful we actually had a a neighbor with kids in the same age came over and and, you know was in the driveway with us which is a good way to hang out and uh it was a it was a wonderful time so i probably got what like two weeks left of that that i can do Pro- probably well it'll be too cold for two weeks then it'll be warm enough for one week and then it'll be surface of the sun so yeah <laughs> yes would you watch with the kids um they had just finished the lion the witch in the wardrobe so we watched the disney version of that oh cool mm-hmm. i remember going Which, uh, to see that in the theaters yeah that's got that's got some surprisingly scary jump scenes in it oh yeah um yeah there's one where he's like walking through the courtyard with all the stone animals Mm -hmm. and steps directly over uh the wolf which is decidedly not stone (laughs) and like jumps up basically between his legs Mm. um i jumped out of my chair and luke i think jumped up into the tree that was over (laughs) us (laughs) we're still waiting for him to land yeah Yeah. (laughs) oh that's nice yeah yeah uh over here, nothing too much is going on. Uh, usual catch shenanigans, but just honest, honestly, just just also wait, you know, enjoying it being brighter. Uh, I've got like all kinds of outdoor chores that I am uh, hankering to do as I settle into my boring, you know. Ah, I've always been boring. Ah, who am I kidding? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, just uh, everything's kind of in a little bit of a holding pattern while also. Uh, having a lot of uh, a lot of work, a lot of play for work, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I saw you playing some Ace Attorney for a minute. You you did, yeah. I um, saw it. I am on day forty five of the last case, so we need to get that scheduled uh, <laughs> yeah. to to record about that. Cool. <laughs> so. Oh, at this point, it's been so long. I'll have to revisit it. Oh God! <laughs> like, like, oh God! It's been a while. I don't oh, you guys know. get staggered on your playthrough <laughs> versus memory. Oh, yeah. the, the TV trips page is actually really good for. Uh, yeah, for, I'll, for I'll, I'll refresh my memory about yeah. it. I'll probably watch you know a bit of a let's play or something. Mm. And you know. yeah, yeah. So no, uh, just been uh, 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 honestly, it's just been more of the same, and that's okay uh, mm-hmm. because boredom is a privilege. Uh, it, it is. I, I wish I had more boredom in my life, Cole. Yeah. So. No, that's <laughs> oh, looking at my looking at her. She she's like, Dot, Dotty the cat has started like shredding cardboard and paper stuff. So she shredded. I got oh. a little model kit to make. A, it's like a model of Mega Man X, but he's like got mm-hmm. his he's red and he's got his little flame attack. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. it'd be fun to put a model together. She shredded the manual. So, <gasps> oh, <no>. yeah. <laughs> my problem for laying it out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, she's not letting you be coddled by direction. No, no. <laughs> Figure uh, the, it out, Ross. The, the paper directions are all in Japanese anyway. So, she, <laughs> yeah, she knew they would be useless to me. And I went online and they have English ones uh, on the well, website. Then, so, yeah, that's good. You're all good. Dottie Happy helped end. me. <laughs> yeah. cool uh so i think that we've done the banter here at the start uh why don't we do the uh regular kind of show what with the grind the multiplayer and the end boss and we can get started with the grind the grind where we talk about the things we have been playing over the past period of time or so jala i'm going to throw it to you it's been a minute. All right. Um, for a while there, I wasn't playing that much of anything. So um, it's just because there have been my major disasters and such going on. Uh, However, yeah. I have done I have done some gaming. Um, so in Pocket Person's Sword, also known as Pokemon Sword. Thank you. I completed the main <laughs> game. I am the champion. Cool. Um, <laughs> and also, I have to share a few pretty good thing so um if anybody is unaware i mentioned this previously but i called my slowpoke dave right because dave moves at his own pace and slowpoke has his like you know um internal ability auto ability his own pace and so i thought that was very funny so then every other slowpoke evolution is also dave 
So <laughs> Dave beat the end boss in one hit. You can watch that video on my Twitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And also, I was very happy to say when I was fighting, you know, my last battle to become the champion after fighting the end boss, Dave also beat Charizard. <laughs> nice. So, Must be a bug game or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is so versatile and useful. That's so. Oh, no, yeah, OK. I was I was about to be like, oh, wait a minute. Charizard. No, Slowpoke slow is water, right? Water yes. psychic. There water we go. psychic. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, make, it makes it makes sense. Also, Charizard's a chump. So, oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I had to bring that up. <laughs> well, that's, like that whole debate was, in fact, the reason why I started playing this game. Oh god! <laughs> so, <laughs> we did this to you. And- 145 hours later, guys. Sweet like, God. <laughs> <laughs> I will be so, more careful about what we argue about. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I previously completed the Isle of Armor DLC, and I caught all of the legendary birds for the Crown Tundra DLC. Ooh. But after I finished the main game, I also beat Calyrex in the Crown Tundra DLC, which is a special two-part Pokemon. Um, And I'm currently working on the last part of the Crown Tundra DLC about the legendary Titans. I don't know how many there are, but I've caught two. (laughs) But anyway, I think there's like five or six. I don't remember. Um, And so you have to basically find their little lair and then go in there and beat them and then catch them without killing them. And at this point, because I'm so high level, um, the without killing them is the trick. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then also I have been lately teaming up with Dave, John, and Desiree to catch all of the legendaries in the Dynamax adventures. After you beat the full game, you also get access to ultra beasts that are in the Dynamax adventures. And then there's a bunch of those to catch. So hmm. like now that I beat the game, once Dave beats it, we still have a whole bunch more. We didn't even finish the legendaries yet. <laughs> oh so, but the Dynamax adventures have been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been having quite a lot of fun. Um, all of us have doing those together, just like getting on to the voice chat and just kind of chit-chatting, catching up about the day, and then just playing a couple of rounds or something. Nice. Um, so that's been fun. And... Um, Not like I'm surprised or anything, but there was no real lead up to the story ending because there's actually a sudden world threat in there that comes out of nowhere in the middle of you trying to become the champion. And then there's like no real sense of urgency about anything. (laughs) And the evil man is still smiling and thanks you and gives you prize money when you beat him. So like it's (laughs) it's very, very prosaic. It's just like. Okay, <laughs> why not? So you know, that, foiled, that, foiled that again. Was... Here's a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's some poke money. So <laughs> anyway, uh, and it's the useless poke money too that doesn't get you anything important, and oh, you get yeah. so much of it during the game. But anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> so uh, at this point, I'm just kind of winding down on that. I will be playing the rest of the Dynamax adventures with my folks. Mm-hmm. Um, until we exhaust that completely but i you know and i'm going to finish up doing the titan thing catching the titans but i don't think that there's anything else that happens after that mm-hmm. you know like i don't think you get anything magical or special for having gotten them you just congratulations you have more things living in your boxes that you can pull out during a right. fight i guess so eh I mean, I'm doing it just because <laughs> it's something to do in the pokemon game yeah. but then yeah. i will be burned out for a while of the very long, very long game. Like that. Remember when I was just like 95 hours of my life for persona Four golden. And now here's 144 on. <laughs> uh-huh. on. I, I have passed how long I've played Skyrim. Have playing you? this game. Cool. <laughs> is that, is, is, played... is that possible? I thought, I thought Skyrim was your most played game bot right behind uh, RE six. Right. I'm actually booting up to see what my time on RE6 is because now I'm curious to know whether or not um, this is uh, my most played game that I have, at least on record. Okay. Let's see. And are, are you factoring Oh, no. All- no, 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 no. Because no. 232 hours in Resident Evil 6, there's no way. Right, <laughs> 232. Right. That, that, that would have to be a pretty good game 
to <laughs> right. do more than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, excluding the MMOs that I played, Guild Wars and Guild Wars Two, because yes. I played a lot of hours of those. Yeah, that but, would uh, that would change things. Um, those those kind of operate on a log scale, though. Like that's just yep. a different <laughs> yeah, point yeah. of reference. Yeah, it, 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 and that it, becomes a big social thing, and that's the whole thing with Resident Evil Six as well. Is that mm-hmm. it's just a very big social thing for me yeah so anyway so any questions about the pocket persons w- what's involved no, I, in a dynamax adventure um that's what when i mentioned to you that is in the crown tundra dlc only where you are given a random pokemon when you start the dynamax adventure you have to pick one like you have mm-hmm. a, a selection of random pokemon that you can pick from they don't have the exact same skills that they do if you come across them in the wild like they have skills that maybe aren't even their type or you know like that they would never have normally mm-hmm. um and you pick one and you go onto a team it's kind of like a max raid battle which is a four person team up against a dynamaxed pokemon Mm -hmm. it's the same principle except this is a dungeon where you have four players you can either be with the piece uh you know like the npcs uh just have the computer ai controlling the others and that is very hard to win because it's a difficult you know thing or Mm -hmm. you can team up with random people or you can invite friends and have like a special code so you can play just with them gotcha um and you go through, I think it's like three, oh no, it must be four, four battles or so before you get to the end boss, which is the legendary that you get to try to catch. Mm-hmm. Um, and in those four battles, they are all max raid battles against a different Pokemon. It's, it's um, a branching path, so you get to pick which one you want to fight like when you start out you might be at the entryway and then there's three options you've got a water a psychic and a steel and you have to you pick as a group which one you want to fight and you know you don't know what the pokemon is because like they have the silhouette of it covered up by some smoke so you can kind of see but you know you don't necessarily know what you're fighting um and then again those they might not have the abilities you think they will have right anyway um and basically, as you go through, there's also some scientists and backpackers that will give you items or heal your Pokemon. There might be berries on the ground to heal everybody. Uh, they offer uh, critter swaps if you want to have a different pocket person, um, that kind of thing. And then you fight the guy at the end. Well, you only have four chances, four lives for all of the team for the entire dungeon. Okay. So. You basically, if you die three times, you only have one more chance. And then if you die one more time on that fourth time, you will get swept out of the dungeon and have to go back in and try it again. Right, right. So you do a uh, so, wipe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you do a wipe. And it does allow you to keep, like, because you can catch all the Pokemon along the way. And if you do not beat the legendary, you can still leave with one of the other Pokemon that you caught along mm-hmm. the way. So they make you, you choose one, though? They make you choose one. You can't have all of them. You can only have one. And when you get to the legendary, you can catch it. You can actually accidentally, like, if you're not careful, you can not catch it and then just have beaten it. And then you don't have it because you didn't catch it. Uh, or, you know, after you beat the legendary, it doesn't automatically give you the legendary as your Pokemon. You get to pick. So you, if you're not careful, you know, when you finished the dungeon you might accidentally pick the wrong one and uh yeah yeah so like that's stupid and i think that they should have just automatically allowed it but i mean i understand maybe somebody doesn't care that much about the legendary for some reason and wants Mm -hmm. one of the other ones that they don't have because maybe they didn't catch it yet i don't know yeah so huh okay thank you for explaining that Mm -hmm. yeah uh, if I can, if I can submit just a little amendment on the Pokemon journey on the Furia House side, okay, because mm-hmm. uh, there's not enough to talk about uh, in full, but I'll, I'll just kind of take it on to yours, um, which is Luke has finally beaten the Dragon Gym. Ooh! So he, I mean, he's literally been—I'll say "quote unquote" stuck, but really he just felt like <laughs> derping around instead of doing the main thing, uh, but finally went back to it and had leveled up his Pokemon enough that he he got through. 
Mm -hmm. um, so he had been convinced that that was the end of the game because that was the last item in his badge. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And found out that now he's got to go battle the champion or, or take uh, take part in the finals or whatever they call it. Uh, and yeah. still has no idea that there might be like a grander plot going on. But mm -hmm. uh, it was it was fun to watch. He was, you know, the the unique uh, combination of like leveled up enough, but you know, still making interesting decisions. That the battle came down to one turn <laughs> where he could he could heal and tread water for another turn, or all in and and attack and try to kill the Pokemon before it could strike back. Um, and uh, and he he chose to be aggressive and it paid off. So it was fun. <laughs> Does it look like always choose to be aggressive? By the way, <laughs> you would be surprised how frequently they choose to heal or run. Like they have they have no compulsions about getting in the loop of like you hit me for fifty points, I will heal for fifty points. Then you hit me for fifty points, and I will heal for fifty points. <laughs> um, and that shit will go on until they run out of potions. I kid you not. Uh, <laughs> So, I, be I believe you, Dennis, but I have only witnessed you, Luke yell blood for blood while playing uh, <laughs> Fire. So I have not seen Data Point otherwise. <laughs> That's because uh, uh, Slay the Spire doesn't have a run option. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Blood for That's blood. pretty great. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying though, I mean like that the the main plot kind of pops up at the end of the game. You're like, oh, footnote. They put one of our Pokemon in the Pokemon Center. We put four of those into the Spirit Tower in Indigo Town. <laughs> that's that's a Pokemon Gen 1 reference. I'll be over here. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so can I move on? Yes, you may. Okay. No, this so is the next is the cast now. <laughs> <laughs> the next game that I have played some of is Perception. This is a first person survival horror adventure game by The Deep End Games, an indie studio founded by Bill Gardner, who used to work for Irrational and worked on Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. Uh, this game was released in 2017 for Windows, PS4, and Xbox One, and later ported to Switch, which is how I am playing it. Hmm. The Switch version is a remaster that added new difficulty modes and had some script changes, according to the internet, for the better. I do not know, because mm -hmm. I didn't play the original. And patches were also released at the same time for the other versions of the game. So if you bought it on something else, it ha patched it to update it to the new one. Uh, so in Perception, you are a blind girl named Cassie who has been having bad dreams about a mansion over and over and has come on her own to the place in order to find out why she's dreaming about it and how to stop those dreams from happening because she can't sleep. Uh, you get phone calls from a loved one who is panicking that you've gone off on your own and Cassie says that she's not going to wait for him to show up because she can do this on her own and she has like a pep talk right at the Okay, you can do this. You can do this. <laughs> and she goes into the haunted mansion. You get calls every once in a while where the guy says that he's hopping onto a plane and he's going to come for you and come get the, you know, get her and all this other stuff while you're exploring. Um, so every once in a while you get phone calls. Um, you navigate in the game by tapping your cane, which briefly lights up your surroundings completely or via a sort of echolocation where your foot footfalls or dripping water or flowing wind, etc., lights up whatever that area around that noise is. So you can kind of see it because the players playing the game are sighted. So it helps kind of give them a crutch where it's not all sound based and like a black screen the whole time. Mm hmm. Um, so there's also audio logs. Uh, Cassie has a device that she can hold up to written text and it will read it aloud for her. Yeah. So that's how they work in the audio log bit. Uh, there are three difficulty settings, story, regular, and hard mode. I started it on regular mode where there is a ghost, uh, called the presence that hunts you at certain times. And when you tap your cane too much, but the mechanics are kind of hit and mi hit or miss. So like right. it ends up being more of a waste of time than anything because you have to hide from it, but you yeah. have no idea where it is or when it has gone. There's no visual or audio cue for it because uh -huh. so, I was listening real hard and I was looking and I didn't see any cue whatsoever to know. Yeah. So 
instead of just aggravating myself, because that would just send me over the edge, because, you know, once it gets harder later in the game, that would just, you know, make me mad and I'd throw my switch and I yeah, want to do run, that. Run so, into the alien isolation problem of just like, ah, I just died for base. I died for a reason, but it is a reason that I had no way of not doing. Yeah, so I restarted it on story mode. So although I'd be about halfway through with the game now, I'm actually still in chapter two somewhere because of the restart. Because I had I was already like into chapter two, and then was just like fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> Went back and and restarted it on story mode because I was just like not having it. Um, there's definitely some jank as regards the presence, but the story is very dark and creepy, and there's some really good effective horror elements. So. Uh, I don't want to spoil those at all, but I'm also like want to I want to pop because I want to talk about them, <laughs> but I don't want to spoil them. So, um, but there's some really good horror elements that are worked in at least through the first chapter and the bit of the second chapter that I've played so far. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to playing the rest of it, but I strongly recommend that if you check it out, because it does go on sale, it went on sale for pretty cheap. That's why I picked it up. Mm -hmm. um, if it goes on sale again and you are interested in playing this game, uh, survival horror adventure game, and you know, from the perspective of a blind girl, um, I recommend that you do story mode because it's just, it's like there are some times when the presence still um, triggers even in the story mode. Yeah. So it's not like 100% safe or anything, mm -hmm. but it's just not activated as you walk around as much. You know? Yeah, that's so. that's good. That's definitely good, mm -hmm. good to know, especially if you have to restart uh, in yes. order to change the difficulty level. Uh, I hate it when yeah. games do that. Yeah, so... Because of that, though, that's why I haven't gotten further than I, you know, I am currently. I would have liked to have gotten a little bit further. But the yeah. the kind of cadence and the feel of the audio logs and as they are presented is very much like Bioshock. So, like, once when I was looking it up and I was like, oh, this guy did. Okay, that there makes sense. There we go. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, if you like the feel of those audio logs, if it sounds cool to you to be, you know, a blind woman standing up and independently like going and trying to face all this stuff. I'm like, wow, like that mm -hmm. it was inspiring just like starting the game. And I'm like, she's going into this haunt. I wouldn't even go in the haunted mansion. I can see it. I can go. I do not. <laughs> I do not want to go in there. Why is she going in there? Oh, my God. And, you know, you are inspiring woman. So did, uh, you, did you ever see the village? No. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I, I like it. it you know it's not the best but uh you know it's it's definitely it's it, it has charms to it i forgot mm -hmm. which is the twist in it the, the, that has a blind uh blind protagonist who like cool. ventures out from her uh you know puritan era village into the woods do you, do you want to know the twist no i remember the twist i don't want to oh, okay. i mean i i don't want to say it because i just recommended y'all watch it <laughs> yeah it, it's it's Shyamalani. yeah yeah it is it, yeah it, it is directed by m night Shyamalan. uh yeah. i want to i'll be curious when you finish this if you would recommend mm -hmm. streaming it yeah i will let you know um i will be chugging away at it now that i put it on story mode but definitely like if anybody wants to check it out i strongly recommend that you do but check it out on story mode. Yes. <laughs> so um, the last thing that I have been playing is the Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. Oh, yeah. I love <laughs> this game. Old as, the old as Xbox first person stealth action game. This game released rules. in 2004. Mm -hmm. That was only two years after Morrowind, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, it's a tie in prequel. A couple of actors, including Vin Diesel, reprise their roles in it, so that is fun. Um, the game starts with John's taking Riddick to Butcher Bay and Riddick breaking out, but then this whole beginning escape was a dream, and the game starts over again with Riddick being woken up by John's right before he's being incarcerated. And mm -hmm. it was so funny because when I started playing this, I get to the, into this dream sequence where you know, like you're walking up with John's, and then like you have the ability to move around and stuff. And Dave's sitting here watching me play. And then the first thing I do is start killing people. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and so I kept on, like, as I kept on restarting and then killing them a different way and like killing them in a different order and <laughs> things like that. 
And um, it was really funny because, you know, he's just like, I can't believe that you did it. You know, Cause I ended up breaking the game. It's like, you can't get out of here without this guy's help. And, and then like, you know, uh, I killed him. And so I had to restart. I broke the game because I, I killed one of those characters that you're not supposed to kill. It's kind of like in Morrowind. I did that too. I killed <laughs> one of those people you're not supposed to kill. The threads and of then, prophecy like, it, have been. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, and then Dave, at that point, I, he was just being sent so far that I was just like, okay, you play then. <laughs> you play a little while because I'm going to keep doing this. If you yeah. think this is the end of it, I'm going to keep doing this and pushing all the buttons and seeing what I can do. And if I can break the game, that's what I'm going to be doing. Mm-hmm. So, what am I going to do? Not anyway. kill people? That's from I know, the first like person perspective. Like, uh, it's a first person perspective Riddick game. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's <laughs> so like, you know, we've, we've kind of toggled a little bit back and forth with it. But um, anyway, after that, you get incarcerated in Butcher Bay. You get to know the jailers and some of the inmates. And your first mission is to take down the current inmate Patsy and his gang. Um, and then after that, you end up hacking into the computer mainframe and instigating a prison riot as a distraction so you can escape into the sewers because there has to be a sewer level. Of course. Mm-hmm. In the sewers, you meet a guy named Pope Joe and a bunch of mutants called Dwellers. And I guess they're going to be like regular fixtures. Mm-hmm. Pope Joe heals Riddick's wounds. And then a random lady inside his head tells him that he has been blind for too long and gives him his eye shine. I was like, when I saw Pope Joe, I'm like, oh, this guy's got to be the one that gives him the eye shine. <laughs> nope. nope. It's some random, like, because in, you know, in the Riddick movies, there's a random lady that starts talking to him in his head and t- you're a fury and, and, and whatever, like that happens in the game too. And I'm like, oh, that that's, that's not as cool. I was kind of hoping for like a creepy, weird, you know, Pope Joe preacher man in the sewers mm-hmm. doing your shine job. So that was kind of a letdown, actually. And then <laughs> when I left off, Riddick had emerged in the showers of the guard quarters. And I'm sure you are going to try to break your ass out that way <laughs> and be foiled because it would be way too short of a game. It would. If it was that way. <laughs> Does, so, that, does that cover the solitary confinement section? Am I remembering that right? That that's in the Chronicles of Riddick? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I that, remember that, like a bug level towards the end of the game. Yeah, there's like bugs and robots games. and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what happens. Maybe I get captured after I get through the guard area and mm-hmm. then get thrown in solitary. Uh, yeah, I just remember the, because, the solitary confinement section being really, really cool. Yeah. Well, uh, we can't, uh, like, I don't remember a solitary section so far. And it, like I said, it can't end this quick. He can't get through yeah, the yeah. guard stuff. It, it, they have, they would have like a two level game at that point. Yeah. You it's know, a, or a three level game. So it's a you know, relatively I'm long sure. game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that I will be captured and then thrown back in, and then I have to deal with because they they wouldn't have spent all that time on the jailers otherwise. But yeah, that also we felt like we felt like some Riddick, but we didn't really want to watch because we we already went through and watched all of the Riddick movies from the beginning and reading the novelizations. <laughs> um, and the last thing that we've got to watch is the last movie that that was just called Riddick, and um, so we need to both of us need to rewatch that. And then we'll be done. So mm. that's why we kind of stopped and we're playing the old games and we're going to play this one and then Dark Athena yes. and then probably watch that last movie. Did I um, say it might be it might be in Dark Athena. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where this sequence that I'm remembering is. I, I mm-hmm. played all those games. But it's so long ago. I don't remember what was what. Boy, it's been fun watching the movies again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's been you know, fun, fun, dumb, you know, like that. Yep. nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that at all. And then just, I, Dave is just like, they turned up the bass in his voice. They turned up the treble on everybody else's <laughs> voice because he's so low. And he's all trying to do his Riddick impression. He's yeah. like, I can't get that low. They no. made him really gravelly. And he's just going on and on about how much they turned the bass on for him. <laughs> it's funny. Oh I need gosh. to rewatch Chronicles of Riddick because I remember really liking that movie when it came out. And I'm not sure how hokey it's gotten in 20 years. It's it's something. <laughs> it's probably very. But there's <laughs> it's nothing very. Wrong, there's nothing wrong it's, with it's that. Yeah. No, it's it's very it's very something. All right. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you play this back when it was contemporary, Jella? 
I did not have an Xbox when it was contemporary. Oh, okay. So this is your first time going at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, does it feel modern to you? It like, plays like, just fine. I mean, yeah. like the, the the graphics are actually pretty decent too, with the exception of people's eyeballs. Like yeah. when when you look up, like when you look at them, sometimes they'll be like looking up, and then their eyes are all like huge and wide open, and it's just very <laughs> funny, kind of jank. And I'm like, you know, I know the character models on this are not super perfect or anything, mm-hmm. but like. This was just a little bit after Morrowind, and Morrowind had beautiful settings and the trashiest models. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Like I played an Argonian in that game, and which started me playing, you know, Gojira the Argonian in every <laughs> single game thereafter because the Argonian looked the least terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, so. it's, it's already kind of a monster monster person. Yeah. So, well, it's already kind of angular and spiky anyway yeah, with the yeah. horns and everything, so it's fine, you know. Yeah. I just I remember, I mean, it was really visually impressive because it had like nor- normal mapping and like uh very detailed lighting and stuff, but even just in like a play perspective, just having a uh first person game that was that narrative focused where like you mm-hmm. were walking around and people were talking to you and you were doing like quests, like that wasn't really a, a, a thing, especially a on thing consoles. Back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um and also like, you know, I hadn't played the Thief games at this point, but like I remember Chronicles of Riddick like <laughs> being the first game that I played that really solved first person stealth. And mm-hmm. also kind of being the first game that I saw that I played that like had first person melee be really good and interesting. Oh, melee. Now that you mentioned that. So the first boss that you have to fight is the the Patsy guy, Rust. And like, boy, okay, I am not really a fan of how that played out. Because like in the cut scene, because you are Riddick, you, you know, do all this flashy stuff and like, you know, you're super smooth. But then when you get to the actual fight, like the guy mm-hmm. is so hard and like you're either stabbing him like tink, tink, tink <laughs> with your little frog sticker or like you're trying to punch him and just failing while he's like, you know, doing these ballet twirls around you and like yeah. slashing at you and stuff. And so you basically, what I read on the internet on a walkthrough, guys, was to back up to the stairs and heal your life because he he will follow you to there and then he'll back back up again and go back to the arena so you can heal your life and cheese his ass and that's oh. what we ended up doing. Weird and bad. Turned into a Dark Souls game. And this, <laughs> yeah. it was recommended in the walkthrough. <laughs> It was bad. I was like, and that, that was after several attempts of actually trying it and then just being like, okay, uh, I'm just going to, you know, set this game down. If I don't yeah. play this, this should not be this hard. But, um, <laughs> and sometimes it feels a little jank because, you know, like it is also a shooter. There are shooty parts as well. And like, it's some of it just doesn't feel like mapped the quite the way that it would be these days and so it, d- it feels a little bit different because it's so old yeah, but like yeah. for its time especially it did a lot right it did mm-hmm. a, you know a really good job like the fact that i can go and play it now and not feel like boy this is the oldest game in the history of <laughs> games you know like this is really dated like yeah the graphics have their moments but yeah, you know it's yeah. not bad it's it's really not bad at all so it's a solid title. I'm grateful you played and talked about this because I forgot how good that game was. It's been forever since I thought about anything related to Riddick, let alone that very <laughs> good game. Well, I'll be playing more of that and I'll be talking about that and I'll follow up with you about perception as cool. well. Yeah. I don't have any other questions about Riddick. It's just a, uh, that's it. Yeah. Yep. That's all I got. Cool. Uh, let's see here, Dennis, since you talked a little bit about, uh, Pokemon of the Fury house, I will throw to you. Yeah. And like I said last week, I've, I've been playing a ton of games. Um, so I got through everything that I finished last week. I'm going to start in on everything that I've started recently this week. Um, which I'll start with the switch games. I, I busted out super smash bros. Oh, uh, ultimate for Luke and Milo. Oh. And let me tell you, that is some of the most entertaining, intense Smash Bros. you will ever watch. <laughs> um, because because they are so equally matched, um, by which I mean they are both equally likely to just walk off a ledge. There we go, yeah. <laughs> the tension is whether or not they can figure out the right button to hit the other person. Yeah. No, it is. They, there will be extended periods of time where they will just be 
furiously throwing blows at each other, but slightly too far apart to actually connect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And to them, it looks like great action. Like they're they're just here to yeah. they're they're here to watch it as much as anyone else. Um, and uh, you gotta kind of like push them together. Like, come on, guys! <laughs> now listen, you fight your brother and you like it. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> finish him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's that's been really fun. And the I guess I didn't realize you you can unlock all the different characters just through playing the the standard mode. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been going through the spirits mode. Mm-hmm. which is like really convoluted RPG game board kind of stuff going on. There's lots of weird um, twists to the fights. Um, and I thought that was the way you had to do it to unlock all the heroes. Um, but what I found out in, in watching Luke and Milo play is every so often, just as you're regularly playing the game, yeah. um, whoever wins the match will then to get to face off against a challenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can beat the challenger, then you, you get the hero which is a really elegant way of doing it. I don't know if it's different pools from what's in the spirits game uh, or, or what, but I think they come along in a pretty good clip. I'm shocked that three years out, they have not just unlocked everything from the beginning by default. I know. I, I, where's the cheat code, man? There might be, I I need to go get that. Um, But I, I tell you what though, when, when, you know, one of the kids gets a challenger that like ups the game even further. <laughs> um, and it's really cool because, you know, I've, I've played with them as well. And the game scales the challenger AI to like your, your skill level. Okay. And so like it, if I was playing them um, and I was the one facing off against the challenger would actually do something. Um, their challengers basically shield occasionally and wait to be hit. Oh, okay. That's their, their primary strategy. <laughs> Which paired with the chance of walking off a ledge, again, makes for really interesting. Real 50-50, yeah. <laughs> Especially if, if you've got a level where like the challenger spawns in, drops down, but there's a hole between you and the challenger. And it's like, all right, you just got to get over there to hit him and you can win this. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's been that's been a lot of fun to uh, to play and watch played. Um, and we've, uh, I, I forget when, but we picked up another joy con, meaning we've now got four mm-hmm. controllers. Uh, so that's expanded our options for, for playing switch multiplayer as a family. So that's four, been, that's four been halves fun. or four. four yeah. Controllers. No, no, no. Four halves. I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's more, more spent more on extra controllers than on the switch itself. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Um, the, the weird thing is, so the, the joy cons that came with the switch, I didn't have the little like plastic bars that you put on them or you're supposed to put on when you mm-hmm. hold them sideways. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, this, the new controller has those. And it hurts my hand more to play with the plastic bar. I don't okay. know if anyone else has that problem, but it just, that feels more awkward to me mm-hmm. than just having the controller with, uh, you know, the little indented button on the rail. Those things yeah. have never left the drawer on my TV thing yeah same yeah (laughs) yeah so that's i i I don't know who that's for but it's definitely not for me um and i don't know if that's universal or just because of the way i hold the controller or what but you know no big deal i'll just pass it to someone else i think maybe if it's like you have like a whole bunch of people and everybody just has a single half controller maybe it might make more sense depending upon the game but it it yeah, I've seldom, I've not used it at all. So. Yeah. yeah, well, it, and it, it straight up hurt playing the other game that we got, which is uh, Mario Kart 8. Mm. So we picked that one up new when Jen finished uh, Super Mario RPG. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was she was hankering for more Mario, so that's that's or where we were. Paper where we Mario at. Origami King? Oh, yes, excuse yeah. me. No, it didn't, not, not correcting you, uh, it's out of uh, clarity, let's say. Yeah. The, the Paper Mario RPG of this generation. Yes. Um, but yeah, so so we went out and ordered uh, Mario Kart the next day, got here pretty quickly, and we've been playing that four-player split screen. Um, and that's been that's been a lot of fun because the the settings, you know, by player you can set um, auto drive and auto accelerate. Okay. To where, you know, basically the game plays itself for Luke and Milo. Um, and it's, it's a little more involved, um, or I would say they're, they're more reliant on that AI or that assist than they are in super smash bros where they're kind of, uh, playing against someone of equal skill level, but they can, they can get by, they can get around the track. Uh, and then Jen and I are, are having all the fun that goes with having a rival in Mario Kart. 
Um, so, you know, we're, we're seeing a therapist now. We're trying to work through our issues. Around <laughs> <the therapist>. uh, <laughs> uh, it's actually, it's actually been a really good time. Um, and everyone gets to play and feel like they're, they're participating and, um, it's all on the same screen. So it's just madness. Um, but my, I, I tell you what, playing that with the half a controller, mm-hmm. um, especially with the plastic bar on it is hell on my hands. Oh yeah. That like a can't can't do that for too long before it just it just hurts so yeah, yeah. Pin, pin, pinch in the xylophone yeah mm-hmm. as as brilliant and clever harmonica there we go harmonica <laughs> I, I could see xylophone piece you know especially yeah, they yeah. got the uh which instrument is the switch controller most like let's let's debate that i don't know uh, <laughs> i don't feel like debating that actually What's that? <laughs> I don't feel like debating that actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I concede the floor to the harmonican. Uh, Yielding my time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, it's it's a very clever controller scheme. I just wish it it didn't hurt my hands to play yeah. that way. Um, but yeah, you know, where whereas Super Smash Bros, you gotta unlock everything, right? Mario Kart 8, it is all right there for you right from the start. Mm-hmm. Um, you unlock some car pieces, but I, as far as I understand, there's not really anything from a technical or a, a mechanical standpoint um, that's off limits to you. It's just all the different skins you can put on it, and then certainly all the tracks are there right up front. Yeah. Um, so it's you know the the I, I'm not sure which of those games came out first. Uh, I uh, think it might have mm-hmm. been. No, Ma- Mario Kart Eight was, or Mario Kart or D- Eight Deluxe was uh, was a launch window, uh, yeah. la- launch window game on the on the Switch because it was a remake I mean, of the uh, the um, Wii U one. Yeah, so they they reverted, I guess, uh, in terms of you know accessibility of of all the stuff. Yeah, um, which you know it, it, they're different games, and I'm sure some people take great pride in unlocking all the heroes in, in Smash Bros. And I, I won't deny anyone that. But there's so many of them. I guess my question mm-hmm. is like, with the cast that big in Super Smash Brothers, like how oh, Dottie, don't stick your paw into my coffee. You're nasty, <laughs> girl. Come on, Dottie confirmed for Super Smash Bros. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Dottie has entered the fight. Um, yeah, no, she's sticks, <laughs> she she loves sticking her paw in my old coffee. Um, anyway, no, like, so your kids who are six and four, mm-hmm. yeah. Like how much are, the, how much do they know about like the cast of characters here? Like, do they, do they know like, Oh, it's Simon Belmont or is it just like, ah, he looks oh, cool. No. Not, not anything. Like, I don't think they even realize that Lucario is a Pokemon. Okay. Like it, it's that level of, uh, of just this, this one looks cool. Like they, you know, they recognize yeah. the Mario and the Donkey Kong and, and that sort of thing. But uh-huh um what's the is it simon uh is like the the chain wielding yeah person? simon simon belmont yeah simon belmont yeah so my last is i want to play that girl <laughs> right because he got the long hair he's like a barbarian <laughs> Locks, yeah um so yeah there is there is zero familiarity um they'll, they'll come to it backwards uh as they as they explore the nintendo catalog so <laughs> we're just planting a bunch of fun little easter eggs uh it, you know it's like me as i as i came around on actually like finding good music kept on recognizing songs out of uh of uh guitar hero uh-huh that was that was a touchstone that got me into more <laughs> stuff so nice yeah so that's that's been a lot of fun so lots of lots of mario lots of nintendo going on in the furia household right now cool um yeah uh what else have i been playing i started um oh yeah well ben we should talk about this uh i started satisfactory oh yeah, that's um, right. Prodig- ben bullied me until i until i yep. picked it up yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was a very kind and gracious guide um through the first world so i created a co-op world um and kind of started started a base anew uh well a new for ben first time for me um, and that game has a really fun, uh, you know, work your way through the tech tree thing. And, and Ben has, has kind of talked it. I won't say talked it to death because I'm enjoying playing it, but it, Ben, you've certainly covered the bases on satisfactory better than I could have. Um, what I can speak to is how much of a difference it makes having someone there who knows what they're doing. Yeah. You make fewer mistakes for sure. 
Yeah. Exactly. To the point where I, so I, I, we, we played on a co-op server. I, for my like solo play, I decided to start from, there's like two biomes that are considered beginner level. Um, and so I just started a solo game from the other beginner level biome. Um, and I had forgotten that you need to build an equipment shed to build your first like resource miners. Yeah. And spent probably 15 minutes trying to figure out where the hell it was and what I was doing wrong, even though I'd seen Ben do it in the previous playthrough. Um, so having having someone that's just a little bit familiar with the game completely it's, it's changes the It's a lot to keep experience. track of. There's a lot to keep track of. And I think this this game, uh, at least from what I've, I've experienced in the two games, I feel like Satisfactory does a way better job signposting your quests and what you're looking for than uh, Subnautica did. Yeah, I feel like I spent a lot more time lost and and kind of confused about what I needed or where I had gone. Um, I I you know get halfway through a recipe and then forget that that was, that was what I was building towards and build something that used half the materials for the recipe that I was saving up. Uh, and I haven't had that problem in Satisfactory. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it, that could be a me thing, but just the the ability to like pin um, the resource lists of different items as as kind of sub quests is really nice and yeah. Uh, I've, I've, uh, had an easier go of that overall. Um, yeah. What else can I say about satisfactory? Uh, Oh, Ben. So on my solo server, I built back up to the point that we had gotten to. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. How long do you think we were playing that first time? Like how much is that? Like Maybe like hour? one to two hours. Yeah. 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 It wasn't that long. I think I probably in under 40 minutes, got back up to where we were before just because like i knew the drill uh, yeah and and knew what i was going for and and you know found all uh good veins for minerals on the first try and all that stuff so i was very happy with with how that went Mm -hmm. um you know that just just reaffirms that you know having been through it before having some semblance of uh of direction i think i think what we've confirmed is like the best way to set play satisfactory is for the second time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how it goes with a lot of those types of games too, right? You don't know how the tech interacts with one another until you experiment. And then it's like, Oh, this is how you do it then. Yeah. There's a yeah. saying that I use when referring to this, talking about like management sims and stuff. I get made fun of saying it for on other shows uh, with Gary, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of the idea that, you always throw away the first waffle because it d- doesn't turn out right. You lose too, you use too little batter, it gets burned, whatever, you know, and mm-hmm. the second one is where you start, they, you start making good waffles, you know, that is my shorthand for describing this phenomenon where oh, like, you know, it's like, you, it's like with kids. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's bad. Wow. Ex- exhibit a, Hey there. Courtroom. <laughs> I'm fine. sorry. I came because to this. <laughs> Say no wonder Luke needs to be so aggressive in the household. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take the shot. Yeah, Yikes. no, but I, I, I agree with that. Like there's, there's, yeah, just that that kind of shaking the rust off is in a multiplayer game is kind of the way the thing I would equate it to. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, you always need that warm up round or two. It's just a, the same same principle, just in a different form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for these games, nice. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that, that's, uh, that's good. It is, it is a very Zen game. Uh, and while I'm playing a lot of track mania, which is like a very focused, precise game, it's nice to go to satisfactory, which is, is just much more at your own pace, mm-hmm. um, as, as a cool down. Yeah. Um, on the track mania note, if, if people don't have other questions about satisfactory. No, it uh, kills me every time you guys talk about it. Cause I, I, I literally, <laughs> I cannot play it. Uh, but then ensuring that we will continue to oh no i totally can i would just fall into a, i mean i'm already down a stardew hole which i'll talk about but um <laughs> yeah uh no it's it's the, a similar thing uh uh it's kind of in the Frostpunk prison architect it, rim world corridor star wars you know, i just i if i start playing it i can't i, I will never stop it only takes a hundred hours of your life and then you get over it <laughs> yeah yeah what's a hundred hours huh yeah, what what is a hundred hours? Nobody has told me that I'm going to die. <laughs> that is new information to me. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, so um, so Trackmania, I have been doing a lot of mapping, which I think I've mentioned before. 
Uh, and I found a community of North America players and mappers. So the, mm-hmm. the game's main fan base is in Europe and in France specifically yeah. uh, because of, of the developer. Right. Uh, but this, you know, this group is kind of focused in North America and we all decided like, Hey, we should put together a campaign just showcasing like the best of what North America creators can do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I contributed two maps to that campaign um, and that went live last week. And that has been really, really fun because the response, like I was like, oh, you know, a couple people will check it out or like, it'll be, it'll be mostly the people, the mappers playing mm-hmm. each other's maps. Like, you know, I'm, I'm here for that. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll go to each other's bar concerts, you know, the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's actually been a pretty large group of people that has, has jumped in and checked it out to where, um, earlier today, the, there was a, a streamer who's fairly popular, um, playing the campaign that had over a thousand people watching while oh, he was dang. playing through our maps. Yeah. So yeah. he, he did, there's 25 maps in a campaign. He did the first 10, uh, and then he's going to do the remaining 15 on Saturday. And both of my maps are in the remaining 15, but like, Ooh, neat. it was just surreal because I, I'd watched the, you know, I, I'd watched all the maps that he played being developed and like tested them and gave commentary and, um, you know, worked with people, uh, or, you know, helped people along as they were helping me along on my maps. Yeah. And so just to see that come to fruition and, and be so well received is, is super exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like so that's, yeah. Get out there, stretch your legs, show what North, North Americans can do when they don't have to deal with those perfidious Danes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are making our mark. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> It's a, that's that's the battle we're gonna choose. No, it, it is such a friendly community. I, I, I don't even yeah. know how to shit talk about Trackmania because everyone. Is so cool. <laughs> well, that well that rules that it like it uh, it got uh, it, it got some attention. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's a uh, yeah. It's just it's cool to see a group of people in any context just be like, hey, let's do a thing and band together to do a mm-hmm. thing. Uh, so it's, it's always fun to be a part of. Nice. Um, yeah, and um, there are ton of bad uh, examples that i could give of that as well but we'll, right yeah we'll save that joke for another day um yeah so so that's track mania um and and delving into the mapping side mm-hmm. um final final game i wanted to talk about this week uh new game that i started is the really good uh cd project red game uh witcher 3 correct okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah I, uh, jen and i watched the witcher um netflix series and uh, I can't I can't remember if I talked much about that on the show, but we got to the end of it and we're just feeling feeling doing some more. Mm-hmm. Um, I think The Witcher was was seven bucks. So I picked it up. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. The Witcher three wild hunt was seven bucks. If it's on the wow. switch, people know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's been a blast. So that's, uh, you know, we had a couple of shows we're working on, but it's like if we don't feel like watching one of our shows, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll put on The Witcher. Um, and. I have been in awe of how strong the writing and voice acting in that game is. Oh, it's tremendous. I mean, and each of those little like side quests, each like individual quest is like a little episode of a TV show that you're doing. It is, it is so well done. And to where I I would almost say like, I I prefer watching the stuff in the Witcher three to watching the TV series. Mm -hmm. Not alone in that opinion. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) um so the, and there, there's just a ton of little things like in in one of the early quests just a completely random one that you stumble on um some old lady has lost the key to her house or like the door's been jammed shut and you got to help her out um but the i noticed that, like as she's talking she keeps on taking steps towards Geralt, and Geralt keeps on backing up and there's mm-hmm. like just a really subtle and humorous thing about like how worked up and aggressive this lady is about her <laughs> or in her situation and how it, and it like it is it is so well done yeah and it's just completely there for the joy and the nuance of it and to make this just feel real and well-rounded and just enjoyable to watch yeah um i forget how charming the haggle system is where it's like anytime <laughs> you do a mission gotta do a little bit of haggling yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, I just, it, it's day rigor. I'm going to have to ask for 10% more than you offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, and you know, after, after watching the TV show, I mean like, oh yeah, the witchers, everyone kind of hates the witchers because they don't do anything for not coin. Mm-hmm. I feel way more liberated to role play that in the game than I think yeah. I would have if I came to the game first. Mm-hmm. Like if I came to the game first, I would be the altruist and do everything for free. And now I'm like, nah, how, about, uh, how about you grease the palms a little? Yeah. 
Uh, uh, but the oh, good. No, no, I was I was going to go into something different, but continue. Oh, the the thing that puts me even more in awe on top of, you know, how great all the writing and everything is, is they write everything that's like written text in the game, like three different times. Mm -hmm. Like you, you go to the bounty board and there is the, the in fiction post to the bounty board Mm -hmm. that's written one way. You pick that up and it goes into your quest where there's like a summary of what you're doing that is not reposting what was on the bounty board, but is like rewriting that. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, as you're going through dialogue and interacting, like that's all written in a bunch of different ways because you can choose different ways to interact and respond. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, just the amount of text in this game is astounding. Yeah. And they they could have just reposted what was in the bounty board, but there's like <laughs> really concise summaries for every single quest. Yeah. Well, when you go into the quest log, um, you'll notice that like that's written in a voice and it's like, like, who's like, what perspective is this from? It's uh, Mm a, it's Dandelion. Really? Yeah. Who's who's Dandelion? He's the bard. Uh, I forget the name they use for him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I I think it's the same name in the show. No, it's it's it is something more Eastern European because I think that maybe they thought people wouldn't wouldn't uh, jive with a character named Dandelion. Huh. Um, I don't think I've met him in the game yet. Though. No, no, he doesn't show up until. I mean, you're probably still in White Orchard, so yeah, he won't mm-hmm. show up until you get uh, uh, a good ways into the next uh, city. Well, that's fun though. Just like the, again, the, it just brimming with personality. That yeah. Even the quest synopses mm-hmm. are, uh, are cleverly done. Mm-hmm. I mean, and uh, like the performances are really good. Like the voice actor who they have playing Geralt. Like by the time they made that game he'd been playing that character for like eight years so yeah. he really nails yeah. it and does an incredibly good job with it i like this game's portrayal of uh of yennefer better than the uh than, than the tv shows um and also tris is in this and she's really good yeah i just the like there's mm-hmm. the, there's a lot to recommend the game uh the game for yeah. even just like aesthetically yeah so we've been having fun going through that and then you know doing you know, a couch co-op, not co-op version of a game mm-hmm. where, you know, the Witcher is a single player ass single player game. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm just at the controls and, and Jen is kind of hanging out and, and commenting on choices and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're both kind of enjoying it as this cinematic experience, uh, nice. which it, it does really. Well. Have you played Gwent yet? I have, I've done the one requisite round right. um, and it's interesting. I uh, I don't know nearly enough about it and don't have nearly enough cards to to have an informed opinion. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that's a uh, I I've made a habit to buy the Gwent cards that I see at different vendors whenever I see them. Yeah. Good uh, choice. I just I, yeah I feel like that's probably wise, although I have no idea what that's going to do to my economy long term, etc. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I really am. Like I'm going in fairly blind to this game for as popular and ubiquitous as it's been. Um, I just, I haven't read much about it and yeah. knew it was kind of this grand adventure game, but other than that, I'm, I'm kind of going in fresh, which is good. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing just from a UI standpoint that was frustrating is at the starting menu, apparently you can choose to like import your Witcher two save, uh, or like remake choices from that game, the mass effect style, mm-hmm. and it will have very small, but impacts on, uh, on your game in the Witcher three. And so I obviously I didn't have any save data from two, but the the opening prompt was something like, you know, do you want to import your decisions from The Witcher Two or or something like that? Like, do you want to import your save from The Witcher Two? And it was yes or no. And mm. I selected yes, thinking like, okay, well I'll say yes, I want the decisions from two to impact three. It will see I have no save data data, and then it will ask me to make the decisions okay. in some form. In reality, I think what happened is I said, yes, import my save. There was no save. And so it just didn't import anything. Oh, and no. And skipped over the chance for me to manually make yeah. the choices myself. Default Geralt is what I did. I didn't feel like I missed out on, on an awful lot by being yeah. default Geralt. I, I figured that it wasn't going to be anything earth shattering, but it's one of those things where like that could have been clear so easily and it wasn't. Yeah. Which yeah. Feels, feels out of place with the rest of this game. Present all three options at once. Don't import import or let me choose as opposed yes. to yeah yep yeah so uh they, they need to hire us as consultants on the next one and we'll we'll say that collect their five hundred thousand dollars in peace yeah yeah no it's uh everything is easy just make a button yeah. for it or make one less button or one more button than there already is simple really yeah 
Guys, I had a meeting with managers today. This is this is hitting home too hard right now. Uh, what is it? What is it you would say you do here? <laughs> I, I make the choices in the menu. It's, it's a button. Just make it a button. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So that is that is The Witcher Three, um, and that is that is everything I've been playing. Cool. Yeah, uh, Ben. How about you? All right, I got a few things to talk about. Uh, all right, I'm going to blow through the first ones, and I have like one that I'll talk about for a little bit of time. All right, I bought and played Valheim for 45 minutes. Okay, it, it's okay. It's okay. It's not bad. Um, I don't. I can't really say too much about it because I've only played it for 45 minutes. Yeah. So, the, like, like you, you, you playing it for 45 minutes was not a well, like you didn't just decide. Oh, I've had enough after forty-five minutes. It's just that no, forty-five no, no, minutes no. was all. The no, I played. felt okay. the pressure as having you know a show that I talk about video games on to play this game that a lot of people are playing. Yes, so yeah. it, I, it's a crafting type game. Uh, I'm trying to think what it's similar to. I mean, it's like a you know Viking skin, but it you know it doesn't play the same way as like Satisfactory or license your project or anything like that because there's I, not like the automation bent to it i saw uh, it compared like you'd like to rust um, yeah like a more forgiving rust where like it, the, it doesn't penalize you for not eating like it gives you buffs if you do eat like stuff like that yeah that's a pretty apt comparison just has a different skin on rust and there's more npcs that'll fight you over people mm-hmm. i don't even know i i know there's like eventually an option to play with other people but i don't know if it's forced or not um i think the servers right now are super janky what i said apparently their servers right now are super janky yeah they, just, they didn't that. anticipate being the being as popular as they are so they haven't scaled up yeah there's something it's like something like the fifth most popular game on steam or something like that and it's only been out a month something crazy like that mm-hmm. if they had anticipated that success they they need to be like checked in as megalomaniacs yeah for <laughs> real um yeah, so the only objective I have so far is like fighting like a monster boss or whatever, and there's like different ones around. So you you get you get dropped in on this world. Uh, on this eagle drops you off there, and that's kind of it's kind of like the owl in Zelda, where it's providing you tips for how to play the game. Um, that said, this is a game kind of like Satisfactory, where you kind of need a guide to tell you order of operations of how to do stuff at the beginning. Double like I literally just had to go up to an article or a YouTube video to, to figure it out. Because yeah. uh, they tell you, like, the bird even says, like, you should build, like, a, a, a workbench and a shelter. And it's like, okay, yeah, let's do that. How do I do that? And it's like, oh, the game's <laughs> not telling you how to do that. It's like, oh, oh no. okay. So it's like, oh, I need to pick up stones that are on the ground, which are kind of tiny and kind of hard to see unless you mouse directly on them. Uh, I need to build, you know, a hammer. I need to build this workbench, but you need to like build walls around it to put on your cover. There's like a few things like that um, that you have to like figure out how to do. And then you have to kill certain things that I haven't found yet to, in order to get certain resources. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, uh, it seems interesting. I'll probably wait and play it when I have friends to play it with, um, which that sounds kind of sad in hindsight. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where it's like, eventually i think my group of friends that i play games with will circle around to it and we'll get yeah. to it um, maybe maybe if you hadn't just bullied me into satisfactory i'd play yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you blew it. i yeah i only get one bully per month so i'm gonna wait until <laughs> next month before i pull you to play valheim um uh no it seems like fine i you know i don't think i'm not deep enough into it so i don't really want to talk about it for very long because any none of my opinions are well informed right now so mm-hmm. um now, the aesthetics are say- cool Oh, good. Did you say you are building up to fight a specific monster or just like a monster? <laughs> they just say like, go to the woods, fight a monster. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Oh, right. That is fantastic. Yeah, I like it too. Um, they they give you a good, um, they give you, it's like a shadow uh, or fog of war type thing where you have a map, but it's only uncovered like where you've been. Everything else is grayed out. Um, there's like a pretty big perimeter of water that you start out next to. Um, and, and basically things get harder the farther away from start that you get. Um, I got one shotted with, I think I've only died like one or two times, but I got one shotted the farthest that I've strayed away. Like I went into the woods and like I killed a couple of small things and there's one that looks slightly bigger than the, than these like regular monsters and it was blue. And so that should have tipped me off that it was something slightly beefier, but mm-hmm. uh, it one shot and killed me. So it's like, all right, well, I'll have to go back and get my stuff later. But um <laughs> 
yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to move on from that because I'll, I'll talk about that later if I put more time into it. And okay. Play I, more. I, I just have to say, like, this is firmly, for whatever reason, in my head as a Wes Anderson film now. Whereas, like, well, the uh, Eagle Drop, have fun, kid. Why don't you fight a monster? Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> wait, what monster? I don't know. Hey, monster, figure it out, kid. You literally take out an axe and say, I'm going to go chop down a tree. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other game I want to talk about very briefly is I finished Mario uh, Bowser's Fury, at least. I, I haven't beat the 3D world yet, um, but I can kind of speak more to Bowser's Fury. It's not bad, but it's still kind of continued suffering from the same problems I talked about last week, where the missions for the different areas are the same and yeah. aren't really differentiated enough. The maps that they're on are, are differentiated, so that part's cool, and each each map does have an interesting mechanic to it, to its credit, um however like the fact that it's all in one world even though that's like a unique thing to do i think overall i don't i think it makes the presentation like weaker overall um Mm. just because like just thinking of like mario 64 i think it's so much cooler to have like literally like a different skybox for each map that you're in it does so much more to like uh uh to to improve the atmosphere of it Mm -hmm. um as opposed to just being in the background being able to see like all the other levels that are just kind of like sitting next to one another and this like ocean planet you know it's like i don't know it just kind of feels kind of out of place with them all just kind of thrown together next to one another yeah um yeah and then on top of that like it it gets to the point where it's kind of like a star treadmill where it's like i think you have to get to 50 eventually but like i was feeling kind of like done with it by 30 and so it's like kind of had to grind through for a couple hours to get like the other 20 at the different places um and the boss fights don't really differentiate. Like every check in, you kind of do a boss fight with Bowser. Uh, the one at the end's like slightly different. There's like uh, there's a few different mechanics you have to do uh, to try and make it more interesting, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, like and, and even the boss fight at the end like wasn't terribly interesting. Um, mm. Basically, you know, like if you're not performing well, you just run through these things, which is fine, and you just like give yourself a new item. You like you can give yourself a new item on the fly. You kind of like have a stockpile of these items, like uh, like the raccoon uh, tail, or like the fireman Mario, or like the cat costume Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you get hit while in any of these costumes, you get a big Mario. If you get hit as big Mario, you get a small Mario. Um, so basically like, even if you're, even if you, even if you're doing terribly and you just run into things all the time, you just give yourself items and you just keep going through it. And so it's like, it's not really, it's like, okay, what am I doing here? It's, you know, it's like, it's, it's not really interesting. It's not really a, like a well-designed boss fight in my opinion. Cause it's like, you're, it's not teaching you how to do things and like, making you do them correctly or anything like that. Yeah. It's so um, terrified of failing that it's, you know, removes anything interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, overall I was kind of like ho home on that. Um, yeah. I don't know. Again, and I'm not sure kind of going on with uh, what I was saying last week is I'm not sure why they put this game out the way they did. I don't know if they were going, I don't know if this was always the game that they intended to make uh, from the get go or if like they started doing this and then they're like, and then just decided to put it out as is because they didn't want to go down that path further, mm. um, which could be fine. But it's kind of just a more bizarre entry into the series. I mean, I guess it's something to like tide you over. Maybe they're working on a regular standalone Mario game, a la, like Odyssey 2 or something like that. Um, and maybe this is just to tide you over to that. That's fine. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, overall, I was kind of not too impressed with it. Um, so I don't know. Buyer beware if you wanted to pay 60 bucks for it, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry you're disappointed with it. It's all good. I'm going to go. Say, wait gonna... for it to go on sale if Nintendo games ever went on sale. Oh, it'll, yeah. It'll go on sale that. for $50. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I'll talk about one more small one and then one larger one that I did. Another one is a game that I actually started playing yesterday with a group of friends as we hmm. went back and started playing Astroneer. Um, oh, some of yeah. Yeah, some of my friends hadn't played this before, um, and so we, you know, listed out a bunch of games for options, and this was one that was suggested. Uh, so I, ha- I haven't, I haven't played this in like maybe like a year and a half, or two years, or three years, or something like that. I don't know. It's been a while. Um, I guess at least like two years for sure. But uh, it hasn't changed too much, um, at least from the first planet. It, it just it, it seems slightly more refined. 
Um, like the art style is prettier than I remember. For example, there's triangle stars on the first planet that you're in that are just very cute <laughs> and charming for some reason. Um, it continues to be a really good game to play with multiplayer. Um, it's really fun. Uh, the game flow, like getting like four or five people, I think it supports up to eight people, but four or five people on a planet and people kind of divvying up tasks to do and like going off and doing things and kind of working coherently as a team. Like that's a really fun like uh, flow. Mm-hmm. Um we had like uh, I spent my time kind of evenly between uh, going down and like digging through the planet with one other person and gathering a bunch of resources, bring them up up to the surface, and then also coordinating with one of the guys on the surface of like building the different tech trees and building up things that you need to build up. Um, and then we had one person just going off on their own and making a racetrack for a car that we had built, and that was totally <laughs> awesome as well. Because <laughs> when we were done with that, then we all got to race around in it. Um, there's there's one in every group. He <laughs> he also built a ramp to slide down. So like there's this giant mountain you start by, and so he built like a really steep path going up it that you could like run up, and then you could turn around and like slide down it for fun. Mm-hmm. And then when he when he figured out that you could add on to land and grow it out, he made this giant extension that went up like I don't know fifty or hundred hundred feet to the point where it's like you walk up and you almost fall off and die at any given point, and then. And I didn't, he, he was like, oh, there's like a slide that you got to go down. And so I was expecting it to like dip back down and be like a slide or something. But he's just like, turn around. Good luck. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> uh, but it was still cool. Um, so it was, it, it's fun to see people like kind of be creative and like kind of explore any space like that. So that was a lot of fun to go back to. I think we're going to, some of them are talking about getting a server, a dedicated server to keep oh, playing wow. this. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. So you I don't, can work even when uh, the host isn't there. Yeah, I don't think I think that the things will die down before we get that <laughs> before far into it. That crazy. <laughs> yeah, as a short-term fix, we had the one guy is just like it's like leaving it on on his computer so anyone can play it during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was a, a, a good thing to go back to. I doubt that I'll play it much more beyond like ten or twenty hours, like yeah. if that, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway. Last thing I want to talk about. Um, on Saturday, I played Modded Among Us with a lobby of like six people. Um, okay. Huh. So this is something that I've seen from some of the streamers who are doing it, where there's basically modded versions of the game coming out where they add new roles that uh, people can be randomly assigned. So it's basically just making it like Werewolf. Or um, there's another game for this. It's called like... Uh, Salem something something yeah town of Salem which is like yeah. a witch hunt kind of thing yeah uh, yeah like the um just people in chat when I was streaming were talking about this like there's a there's like a joker or a jester role yeah where your goal is to get voted out <laughs> yep yeah yep. Oh, huh. yep. um yeah so I can kind of run down maybe some of the different roles they had yeah jester uh there's a swapper where they have an ability at one point in during a game, they can switch the votes for, for two different people. Oh no. And so, so it's like, if everyone's like, yeah, this person's clearly guilty, they could switch those two if they wanted to and be like, nah, I want to get this guy out instead. <laughs> um, there's an engineer who, uh, whenever, uh, an emergency is going on, they can mm-hmm. instantly fix it from wherever they are. But mm-hmm. if they do that, the imposters get an arrow on exactly where that person is. Oh, um, <laughs> So their location is revealed to both imposters, or and the imposters can kill them if they want. But you yeah, know, whatever. Um, there's a investigator, which is also like a detective on other mods. Um, this one's really cool. You see footprints of everybody as hmm. they've like walked on the map, and so if you come across a body, the footprints fade away with time. But if you come across a body, you might be able to see like footprints like oh. leading away from it, you know, and you'd be like, oh, it's clearly this person. So an incentive um, to not report right away. <laughs> yeah yeah kind of or like you know you can in general kind of like makes you have a much easier understanding of where everyone is on the ship and kind of what yeah. their pathing is because you like literally see it and i um, can see it being fun to to reveal your information that you've gained in such a way that you do not give away that you are the investigator because that yeah, probably sure, puts a sure. huge target on your back yeah yeah um, and then there's one other role. There's two other roles. There's one that's called shifter, which is we're kind of ho- on the fence about, uh, as shifter, you don't have any win condition, but your ability is that you can shift roles with any random person. 
Okay. If you shift, if you shift with an imposter, you die. <laughs> um, oh. So you like basically ran. And so the reason why we don't like it is like, you, if you randomly shift with somebody and you get some sort of random role, like even town or engineer or something, you know, that person's not an imposter and they know you're not an imposter. Yeah. And so it does too much like clearing and cause you can do this with anyone. Right. So we yeah. had like one game where like, Everybody knew who the imposter was because everyone else had swapped roles like in a chain around <laughs> oh, with one another. Oh, so there's, there's not like a cooldown on how there is a the cooldown on swapping. It's like 20, 20 seconds maybe or something mm. like For that. For the new person but, as well? Yeah. I guess yeah, it has yeah. to be the new person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that one we're kind of on the fence about. There's kind of some drawbacks with that one. Um, the last one for townspeople is uh, there's one called a time master, which is really slick, where you can rewind time and I think you can configure what it is. We had it set to 15 seconds. So at, at any point in time, you can press the ability to rewind 15 seconds and then everyone continues to play from where they are there. Whoa. The um, progress on task is persistent though. So you can, you can do some really cool things with it. Like um, <laughs> the funniest instance is I was, uh, we were playing Mira and I was doing the crystals and I had finished it. I see an imposter pop out of a vent and like is like two feet away from me. I immediately hit the time thing, oh. <laughs> went backwards down to the bottom of decontam. I sprint towards button because I know who imposter is, <laughs> and I get killed at the button before I can press it by the person. Oh, oh. <laughs> they outline mind game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was like an awesome like series of events, like with the new abilities. Um, and then there's three different abilities that imposters have. There's like a godfather type thing that you can add where it's like one person is the only person who can kill people. The other person can kill people after that person's voted out or is killed. And then there's a janitor who can clean up bodies, but that has a cooldown to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so huh. there's like a weird thing with like people following one another around and then like <laughs> And then there's no evidence of kills and stuff, so it's weird. I don't know. Um, we we didn't play with that mod because we didn't. You 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 need three imposters for that, so you need like a full mm. lobby of ten if you want to do that. And we did not have that. No. But um, this is it, it's like a, been a really nice like refresh for the game, though. It makes it interesting. Um, and there's like a lot. There's completely new meta, so that, that makes it a lot more fun to play. It's not like very deterministic like i need to do these things yeah. and this is my strategy you have to thing. internalize all of the different tells for what for what makes somebody something else yeah 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 and like the jester is one that we're like pe everyone kind of needs to get better at being jester because it's like too obvious when someone's trying to get voted out you know right, right. it's like hey why are you standing on that body and they're like i don't know you know <laughs> <laughs> all right that person's the jester nobody vote for them yeah so does that end the game if the jester is voted out if you vote out the jester they win and everyone else loses yeah got mm. it interesting yeah yeah High stakes. Um, See, this, you know, I already felt lost about who was where and what was what, and just <laughs> like I, I couldn't follow it in vanilla. This sounds either like it will be terrible for me because I will be even more lost, or it will be an equalizer because now everyone will be lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the best path is, or like get used to the vanilla game, then play this, or just jump right in. But um, I, I yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. It was easy to install. You like have to download. Uh, like a set of files from a GitHub account, and then like you place those in wherever the folder is for the game. And I'm that's sorry, kind of the, I heard easy and GitHub in the same sentence. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. You <laughs> click a link, a file appears on your computer. You drag that to easy another place. Easy there, Einstein. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, they realize you know, we had John all, Carmack over here. Yeah. None of us are boomers. We can all handle it. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, but I think that's the ebb and flow of how you do it with any of them. There's another uh, mod that's out uh, made by this person named Ottoman who streams mm -hmm. on Twitch. And I like went, I went to their stream yesterday cause I saw they were, they were just like programming new among us roles that mm -hmm. they were doing this yesterday. And then today in like a morning streaming lobby, I saw people playing with the role that he programmed like last oh. night. Oh, nice. And, and the person has a fundraiser for like money for college. So this person's like in high school or something. It's oh, like, cool. damn. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the general pattern with all this though is all you need to do is download these like files and then just place them in your game root directory. And mm -hmm. then like you get new roles, uh, you get access to new roles with it. So it seems pretty like streamlined, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. That was a lot of fun. So I think I'm going to try and do it again in the future. Uh, I'm pulling from a couple different discords, but I'm going to try and get a 10 player game going mm -hmm. probably in the next week or two. So yeah. Cool. Yep. Nice. So In, invite it. AOC. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, 
Oh gosh. Nice. Well, a, a good way to make a game that you that you were probably a little bit tired of, a little bit fresher. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know that I have any other questions about it. Yeah, you, know, you you explained it pretty thoroughly. It I'll agree with Dennis. It sounds like a lot. But also probably <laughs> not too much if you're in a if everybody's rolling with it, you know. Yeah, like if if you ever played like One Night Werewolf or any of those mm-hmm. types of games, yeah. it's not that much to handle. It's kind of, there's a lot of conventions there that are repeated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um it, did you have anything else? That's all I got. Okay. Um I'll be pretty refreshing. Uh I am kind of in, I'm in the middle of streaming something uh new. But I don't feel competent talking about it in at length yet. I'll just say if you want to come watch me uh stream Siren for the PlayStation 2, doing that this weekend. Also, Ooh. I have opened up my Bloodborne streams uh to everybody. So when I do the Bonfire Side Chat Rewind stuff, that's on the Twitch channel now twitch.tv slash duckfeed tv if you want to come watch me play some bloodborne it is fun uh and the one thing that i have been playing aside from uh trying to get phoenix right beat so jala and i can talk about it is i did uh fall back into a stardew hole um playing stardew valley after the recent 1.5 uh upgrade uh, uh update rather came to the version on switch i started a new uh farm with, you know, because I, I literally, I last time I played was like four years ago. So I, I started oh, wow. anew on the, uh, uh, yeah, because I can't touch it because I get hooked. Um, <laughs> uh, um, no, so I started on the Four Corners farm that is meant for multiplayer, but is actually like a nice, I just, I like the way that it's laid out because you can compartmentalize things a little bit better, which is mm-hmm. cool. Um, I am on spring of my second year. Uh, and I, w- I am set to finish the community center, uh, by summer, which is nice. Uh, mm-hmm. so I'll have access to more of the end game content that, uh, uh, will, you know, uh, is new since I, uh, stopped playing most of the stuff that they add, like the new uh, environments you can get to new dungeons and stuff like that is, you know, post the, like the main game where you're, uh, restoring the community center. But like right now, you know, I'm just trying to make money. I am currently in the uh, uh, cauliflower, mayonnaise, and cheese corridor, um, so okay. gr- gr- growing and selling the ingredients for the grossest possible casserole. <laughs> yeah, those are just like high value items that you can sell uh, if you can get the if you can get the the, the star ratings up on your individual ingredients, uh, but. Doing stuff like that. Like, it's Stardew Valley. I've talked it to death. You know what Stardew Valley is. You farm. It is, you know, a game that hinges on you not understanding that, yes, it is just one more day, but also it's been one more day for the past three days. Four Mm -hmm. days, five days, week, a month, Cole. (laughs) So, so. Now you're the grandpa. Yes. Hey Siri, set a reminder to check in on Cole. Yeah, let's do a wellness check on Cole. See if he's uh, see if Dottie and Greta have uh, started chewing on his face. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they. they cats, no. man. cats are always accused of eating their owners. Oh right, we did do the yeah no that that was a cut bit because uh, of a because of a thing we did talk about mm-hmm. the caddy in the face thing. Uh, I mean, unless you have any, guys have any questions about Stardew Valley. And Never. how how I'm going about it, I I don't have I don't have anything to more to say other than, oops, forgive me, I'm back to the yeah. old me. <laughs> so like, I, it, okay. is the calmness of Stardew Valley balancing out the anxiety of falling into a Stardew Valley hole, or it's 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 balancing out a little bit. You know, honestly, I'm not that anxious about it. Like I ended okay. up, you know, having you know being a little bit ahead on like. Waff assignment play so i figured i had a couple of days where i could where i would go ham just because i like honestly i felt like i needed it uh Mm -hmm. you know something just kind of repetitious where i could listen to a podcast and just kind of fall into it um and you know optimize something rather than you know you know pay attention to a story or like jump ahead on something big for uh you know for for a show i just kind of needed a little bit of a break um Mm -hmm. and it sufficed for that yeah sweet that's all I got. I like how Cole only has one game, but he probably played more hours than any of us. <laughs> I plead the fifth. I'm not going to tell you how many hours I put into it over the past week. That's not right. a. That's not information you get. 
I'm not trying to shame you. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying. You know, that's not we know you'll you... do that to yourself. About <laughs> <this>. <laughs> it's, it's not information you get. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer, where we ask the people a question and then they answer it. Jala, what is the question that you ask the nice people? I asked if you opened a video game themed cafe, what would your signature dish be? And thanks to Dave C for the question. Yeah. Um, I like the uh, I like the uh, post image that you chose with uh, selections from all of these existing mm-hmm. gamer cafes that are here, including when I was um, informed that I was being on the show this week, I was eating breakfast. And mm. so I, <laughs> I turned to Dave and I'm like, Dave, this is what <laughs> I want to do for the multiplayer question. Phrase it for me, please. And it works. So I, <laughs> that's where it came from. Because oh, you usually I'll, ask me. So I guess all of these are from the uh, uh, Capcom Cafe. Because I see a couple of Cap- uh, Capcom things uh-huh. here. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll get us started here with Sean, who says, I'm an awful cook, so my Mario-themed cafe will only have mushroom soup on the menu. <laughs> you could do the mid- midwestern thing sweet. and just use the mid the mushroom soup as like an additive in other stuff this is true <laughs> yeah throw 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 some uh throw some uh, uh onion soup mix on top of that for some crusties yeah <laughs> i get the full midwest thing going on <laughs> uh if, if you were going to bring up the cr- crusties i was yes you uh, call it crusties literally and unironically, I, did, huh. I, I no, I, I didn't even realize that was a thing. I just I was just reaching for the word. Huh. Yeah. Uh, ben, what does Yara say? Yara says iguana on a stick. Uh, it'd just be a kebab, but with a fun name. Got to have something familiar. Got to have some familiar items to get people in the door. <laughs> a follow theme cafe would be good. I, I, I like that idea. Um. Or is, is it a guana on a stick in Fallout? Or is it lizard on a stick? Fuck. I was going to Google it in, yeah. in silence. And a guana <laughs> on a stick could be huge. Good God. <laughs> those, are, those are big lizards. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see here. Dennis, what does Noah say? Noah says, at the Katamari Cafe, your table is covered in random ingredients, and you use a big <laughs> rice ball to roll them up. <laughs> this needs to exist. Boy. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh Jala, what does Ollie say? Ollie says Nin menu starter Donkey Kong roll. It's a small sushi roll. Oh, like your Donkey Nain. Kong and you're big. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nain, <laughs> Link Awakening. Uh a selection of different sausages giving you a flavor tour of the world. Hmm. Dessert. Mario Tart. It's a tiramisu. <laughs> Fuck That's Mama. pretty good. Yeah. Mario Tart's very good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Greg writes, I think a Fallout style cafe would be interesting uh, so people can see just how terrible the food in the games is. <laughs> uh, let's just not use mystery meat for the jerky, okay? Yeah. No, go go on to the Fallout wiki sometime and look at specifically the prepared foods that they have, like the packaged foods. Like they've got vegan ham, which sounds like the worst possible thing. Even like regular ham isn't that good. Oh man. Um is anybody here? I feel like my vegan ham burn <laughs> should have gone better, but okay. <laughs> is that supposed to be a burn? Because like I'm sitting here meanwhile going, I don't think that I've ever seen a vegan ham. The, <laughs> like, the, it's not, I'm not a, vegan and I don't it, it's not I don't know that that's a I don't know that it's a burn. Well, it's just uh, choo- like uh, that specific choice of meat is so implausible. It's just a weird, <laughs> weird decision. I don't know. It's a weird poll. I think I think it was intentional. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was furiously Googling um, if there is a ghoul chef, because I feel like there's something about a ghoul chef in Fallout. Mm. Serves Gava ghoul. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was dumb. Don't laugh at that. Um, let's see here. Uh, ben, what does Dave say? Dave says, when visiting Arisen's Bond Cafe, you can sample such delectable dishes as Granzi's Herbaceous Salad and Pond's Pot Pie. Or if you're dining with sev- several fellow travelers, uh, Fornival's Feast may be more to your liking. But you can't get wrong with a tall mug of Masterworks Ale to accompany your meal. 
Jolly, can you help me? What game is he talking about? I never asked him. I just posted him <laughs> what's going on about my Who was going to know it? Surely. I was in the middle of doing some stuff. I could text him real quick. Dave, what the hell are you talking yeah. about? Is the game called Arisen's Bond? I've never heard of it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, is, is, is this a Mandela him. effect? Arisen's Bond? Dragon's, Dragon's Dogma. There yeah. we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I just showed my whole ass at a little bit of my balls. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> okay. I've never played Dragon's. I've got it, the game in my backlog. Yeah. I've never played it. Yeah. So. I just I, I didn't play it. And then it became a game that we would eventually do on Bonfire Side Chat for five years. <laughs> and then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just haven't played it because of that. There that, we go. Was that on PlayStation Plus? I'm sure it it had it had to have been. I yeah. think I think it was, and it was like one of the months where I just spaced and didn't download. And oh, out of yeah. spite, I was like, I'm not gonna go buy this game now. I could have had it for free. Oh, it's so on I will sales. Never play it's on sale for like seven dollars so often. That's that is more than free. Yeah. The oh, irony true. is <laughs> the irony is that I looked at his answer, and because it has so many name drops, I was like Surely the boys know about this one, and yeah. I don't need to even bother to ask because it's just so obvious. <laughs> I, I, I should have known at Pawn's Pot Pie because the mm. you, 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 like you can make little minions called pawns who you can order around and do like do group fighting with you. I huh. vaguely remember that from somebody telling me that, but I I had no point of reference. So, mm-hmm. uh, let's see here. That was. That was ben. Uh, but yeah. Hey Ben, um, or sorry Dennis. What does Tom say? Tom says serious answer is a Persona cafe themed around the coffee shops or other local hangouts the characters use. I like the idea of an atmosphere for fans that also holds up as a decent place to hang out. Unfortunately, it will never be as good as the Shin Megami Tensei cafe that used to be there, at least according to the people on the internet. Mm-hmm. The silly answer is a Sephiroth cafe where you give people this pair. I don't get the this pair joke. Like uh, despair, maybe despair. Would you get people to d- with d- 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 pair? Dis- despair? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So after all, this pair. <laughs> I I am so. Dis- oh yep yep this despair. Yep. Shall I give you this this that pair? Is- Oh, it's I a thought thing. surely, surely it has to be more uh, elevated than that, but it is exactly that. Y- yeah, no, it's. I think it's based <laughs> on a bad line reading from. No, it's just a meme. It's just a meme. Somebody. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> a Persona Cafe would be pretty cool if it was like one half the real world and then like one half themed around the uh, the other world from each of the games. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, then you'd have to have so many different locations with all the different. True. You know, and stuff. That would be pretty neat, though, because then that would mean that everybody would have to go to all of them if they were a big Persona fan. <laughs> Recurring um, revenue, see? Yeah. yeah. Get a subscription. Um, Jala, finish us out. What does Rookies say? Rookies is the best. A Pac Man restaurant. You can start with an appetizer's uh, an appetizer of chips and guaca guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Have a pizza minus one slice as your entree. Buy seven and the eighth one's free. <laughs> you can wash it all down with a cherry, strawberry, apple, and orange smoothie. <laughs> or a pretzel smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For dessert, power pellets made from locally sourced Lab to table meth. Lab, lab to table meth is very good. <laughs> because that's what all the developers were on at the time making that game. <laughs> you had me at meth. Yeah. <laughs> talk of talk about recurring revenue. Um, <laughs> guaca guacamole is incredibly good. Yeah, it was very good. I read it earlier and I was just like dying. I'm like, oh my god, this is great. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I'm going to cheat on my answer and I'm just going to say a Dark Souls themed uh, uh, restaurant uh, <laughs> with all of the uh, entrees being uh, pulled from the episode of The Pitch about the Estes Eatery, which was mm-hmm. just, it was literally just Gary and Brayden making as many Dark Souls food puns as they possibly could over the course <laughs> of a half hour. It's incredibly good radio if you go back and listen to it. Also, The Pitch is a very good show that holds up. Mm-hmm. That's the the ambiance would just just be that episode on repeat. Yes, yes, <laughs> drive people away. Uh, <laughs> ben, how about you? 
I would do a Dead Rising 2 themed cafe mm. where there's a bunch of different food items, but you can also order any two items combined with one another. No. <laughs> and there will be Easter eggs with mm. some of the combinations. Or you'll get that <laughs> extra reward with your meal somehow. I don't know. I will take your most expensive dish stuffed with your second most ex- expensive dish. Lobster <laughs> stuffed with tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I'm thinking a uh, a slider-focused establishment. So lots of sliders honoring like all these. TV show. No, 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 no. Like, <laughs> let's not be silly here. Uh, but uh, honoring all the, the various power slides in games. So obviously the Apex Legends would be... Uh, the the standby mm-hmm. uh, and you work your way through all the different games you have different uh, you know ingredients and okay. the 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 top of the menu the the special item would be the vanquish of course okay mm-hmm. okay now you could go back you could do the Mega Man X one you can do uh, mm-hmm. you can do fear mm-hmm. yeah dying mm-hmm. light no yeah, yeah, there's you, a, there, there's tread on these tires you can well speaking of that you can jump in all sorts of racing games there's great power slides in, that, in those games yeah mm-hmm. so we got options hmm I don't know that I would eat a uh, um, fear-based slider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You can really taste the repressed terror. <laughs> uh, and Jala working around to you. I would have a bubble bobble themed cafe. Ooh, very and good. of course, there would be all of the snacks in the game. So fruits and cakes and parfaits and so on that I get very excited about when I'm playing the game. Mm-hmm. And then also the special would be drunk, which would feature a four course meal where all the dishes are spiked with alcohol and you have alcohol with it. And then the challenge special meal where you get a prize if you finish it all would be the super drunk which would be a six course meal spiked with alcohol and you have alcohol with it. And if you finish it, then you get a special prize because the super drunk for anybody who does not know, the little wizard guys are called drunks Mm -hmm. and the, the end boss is super drunk. (laughs) So I did not know that. Well, now you do. Congratulations. You've you've now learned that the end boss is drunk. (laughs) <laughs> I, I i never i i, I never fun. think to remember that bubble bobble is such a delicious looking game that it's so it is based. a very delightful game and yeah. like if dave and i ever play it he better not steal my foods i will be very <laughs> no no He'll wake up in a ditch <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll send you our blue th- blue shell therapist <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun question fun answers thank you Jala, for putting that up mm-hmm. and thank you dave for thinking it up yeah, uh, if you'd like to participate in these, uh, D- D- Dave, D- you did say Dave thought of it, right? Um, I thought of it. He worded it. So oh, there we whatever. go. Okay, it's there fine. we go. I remember that he had a hand in its creation. There we yes. go. <laughs> I credited him as the person who came up with the question, although it was a joint effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you'd like to participate in these in the future, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for them to go up on Monday afternoons. The end thought. Now it is time for the end boss, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us that are uh, that are exciting to us. Jala, and I believe that we have Dennis teaming up on this one as well. Uh, Double feature here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jala, get us started talking about uh, this Pokemon event. Okay, so uh, there are currently going to be remakes of diamond and pearl coming out only on the switch later this year brilliant diamond and shining pearl and another game pokemon legends arceus or arceus i don't know is coming out early 2022 and will introduce fans to the Sinnoh region of diamond and pearl before the existence of pokemon trainers and leagues and in this game players create the region's first pokedex Hmm. uh so, Dennis, tell us more about that since you had an article about it. Yeah, I, the thing that caught my eye about this game um, is that it is a free-roaming Pokemon game with more of like a live-action bent to mm-hmm. the battles than a turn-based uh, bit. And they've they've shown precious little of this game. So I, I'm, you know, we're all speculating and going off like five seconds of footage. But basically, it seems like the extent of most of the combats is that you sneak up on Pokemon and just throw a ball. 
and that's enough yep. to capture them. No questions asked. Um, so apparently Pokemon were stupider back in the day. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, for tougher battles, you do have, you know, Pokemon, what, what you would traditionally recognize as Pokemon, but it happens like in the map. Like you don't go to a, a battle map. It happens in the overworld, I guess is a better way to say it. Mm -hmm. um, right there where you stand and, you know, your, your Pokemon duke it out. It was not clear to me from that video if it was turn-based or like actually an action game, which would be super weird given that we were talking about that last week. So <laughs> uh, go, go figure on that front. Um, but the thing that got me about this, it, just a random aside, is even in that preview video, it shows like your trainer just standing there during the battle. So like, you know, you trigger the battle, it queues up in wherever you're standing, uh, and they managed to get the trainer right in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I was Doug, looking at too. If you're if you're selecting video to share, maybe don't do the one where your <laughs> your Pokemon flash through the trainer to get to the other guy. Like yes, it's, like it's fine if it's early stage, but th that is that is just a move slightly to the right kind of thing. You've chosen to show that yeah. exactly, exactly. Well, so, I, oh. I was kind of interested in like maybe you actually have a hand in the battle somehow, and it's mm -hmm. not just your Pokemon doing oh. something. That would be that would be interesting. I don't know. Guys, if that would Thing. I want to punch a Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see a human hurt a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it would be pretty I mean, it might be cool if it was like a Final Fantasy 15 or Final Fantasy 7 remake thing where you could, you know, jump around hopping control between them, doing their different like abilities and stuff. And it was still a real time uh combat between them. Yeah. And it it was so weird to just the way they danced around, like being very overt about what the gameplay was mm -hmm. like, at least from my read of it, the way they described it left room for the idea that you might just have your starter with you. Mm. And that, that would be a deal breaker for me. Like that's not Pokemon. Yeah. Um, I love, I love what you're describing in terms of like bouncing around and just having a different way of using them like you do in the main game. But we'll it's, it seems so focused on exploration that like my ideal version of this, what came to my mind was like catching new Pokemon who would help you get around in different ways and really de-emphasize combat, you know, make mm -hmm. it, you know, a, kind of like a breath of the wild, which is more about navigating the environment more than anything. But I may, I may literally just be wishing for something based on the little bit that I saw. And there that's, that has nothing to do with what we're actually going to get. So it, it worked last week for us. So I say we do it again. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Back to Jala's story. Just briefly, uh, Pokemon Pearl and diamond came out when I was in college Nothing that came out when I was in college it should get a remake. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also a new Pokemon Snap coming out, and there are events going on this year and mm -hmm. special merchandise just for Pokemon's 25th anniversary. I know there was some kind of special Max Raid thing in Pokemon Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. but there's also other stuff going on in Pokemon Go and things like that. So yeah. there's just like a lot going on because Pokemon is 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm just underlining that for everyone Ooh, on the show. Yeah. No, <laughs> Pokemon Snap can get a sequel because it came out when I was in middle school. If it came out when I was in college, sorry, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what time throws. <laughs> Nothing ever got no, music didn't get any better since then. So <laughs> no. oh, um, obviously I'm just being belligerent for no reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. Neat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I've got mine here. This will be real quick. Uh, so a developer who makes primarily very quirky RPGs, most recently uh, uh, the translation of his older, like just again, very quirky, earthbound like uh RPG Moon came out. This is Onion Games, headed up by Yoshiro Kimura. Um uh, he's working on what might be his last RPG, but he put out a poll uh on Twitter, uh basically just figuring trying to figure out what people are interested in. And something that I didn't realize is that uh he worked on uh a video game called Rule of Rose. And possibly, based on this tweet and based on this survey, a Rule of Rose remake, most likely for the Switch, is in the offing. Rule of Rose is one of the best survival horror games I've ever played. It's also very difficult to get a hold of. Um, you know, and by difficult, I mean the price is very multiple hundreds of dollars just because oh, wow. they, they, they made no copies of it for the PS2. 
um, when it initially came out and it became a collector's item like immediately because it was so late in the PS2's um, in the PS2's life cycle. Uh, he also mentioned a game called Shulip, which is a little RPG that's about going around a little town kissing people. Uh, I understand that game has uh, people who like it, but I am mostly interested in the possibility that we could get a Rule of Rose remake, which this developer, uh, Onion Games, uh, worked on uh, and apparently uh, has, you know, at least the ability to talk to whoever has the rights of it, the rights for it, because more people should be able to play this very good, very compelling game. Cole, do you think the Rule of Rose remake will come with a Rule of Rose remake rulebook? <laughs> you sounded like you were trying to stop yourself from laughing while you said that. Yeah, that was, that's true. That's true. That combined with the effort of trying to say what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I am hoping. I am hoping that uh, that is a possibility. More people should get to play it. Like I said, I need, I want to play that game again because its story is so fucking good. Um, yeah. I think it, Ben, Ben, it is you now, right? Or Ben, you didn't have one, did you? I do have one. You do have one. I'm all over the place here. What do you have, Ben? Uh, Epic, the Games, Epic Games is buying Fall Guys, or the developers of Fall Guys. But even beyond that, the studio that owns the people who made Fall Guys. Okay. Anyway, so bottom line, Fall Guys, they're getting paid out. And then <laughs> the game itself will probably slightly deteriorate in quality, but still be okay. I so. would wonder if they're still going to distribute the game on as many platforms as it is because it just recently came uh, to Game Pass, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Won't be going I, on the Apple Store. Probably yeah, not, I'll, yeah. I'll be curious to... Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I'll be curious to see like how they change it. Like They already they don't necessarily monetize the game. Like, the in-app... Or the things... The costumes you can buy are from, like playing the game stuff that you earn in the economy i guess there is like a there is a way that you can buy in game currency so they'll probably like push on that more i i'm guessing but yeah i don't know i play actually i I didn't mention this in the grind but i played this game uh for maybe an hour or two over the last week Hmm. and saw some of like the updated levels it's uh like it's cool they're still doing things Hmm. and the game the game design's getting like slightly and slightly better with each iteration that's good um they they had a new end game instead of hexagon. It's basically like all the levels are like right on top of one another, and they're like ice levels. So it's like it takes like three different seconds on it to crack it open. Okay. Anyway, whatever. It's uh, bottom line, they're still doing things. That's cool. This will slightly affect that. I don't know. Yes. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, it gives them the resources to continue doing cool things. Yeah. I, I mean, but I don't think that was a problem before. It it, it had that upswell, but I like. It, Epic just doesn't need money is the, is the thing. Yeah. So maybe if they were going to sell to somebody, it's possible that Epic, because they get so much from Fortnite, like Epic Epic is not going to be like hands on. Yeah. And from the game store, like they're not going to be so hands on that they, uh, you know, mess anything up. Yeah. Just like Rocket League. Yep. Oh, (laughs) did Epic buy Rocket League or did, uh, uh, I think it was EA. I think, Right, right. I, I know it went. I know it went Epic Game Store exclusive, but mm. you know, um, cool. Well, that sounds like a segment to be. How do you all feel about bundling it up? I feel button. The credit. She has spoken. It's been, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to level number three hundred and sixty-two. I'm trying to think of any special call to action stuff, but there's nothing that i can think of that's uh that's that, that's huge uh so i will just say all the usual stuff like ratings or reviews telling your friends and of course coming back next week uh is there anything that i'm forgetting don't think so okay um cool well i've been cole ross you can see me stream on twitch at duckfeed tv i've been dennis furia um, you can find me on Twitter at Deck of Wonders with underscores between the names. Um, and if you want to check out my tracks on Trackmania, I am in there as Shogris for some unfathomable reason. Weird. Like, I, I don't know why I use that screen name for that uh, platform. But yeah, mm. S-H-O-G-U-S. Um, oh, PSA. There's a free three months of their like premium subscription available right now through Twitch Prime. So 
you can get in on that for at least a little bit. Nice. There, that's that's my brain dump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jala? I'm Jala John in places. And I've been Ben Merkel. And stick around for some titles. Oh, do we have titles? Do we now? Um, I have one. I have here's some Pokemon. <laughs> nice. I just thought the the phrase Pokemon was fun. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. Dennis, I have you. A few. Oh, oh. Uh, Jala? I have Stardew Hole. <laughs> you said that multiple times. I did, yes. Mm hmm. You were like trying to make sure that it got in there for that. Was anyway, I, no, no, I, 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 I have referred <laughs> anyway, the okay. most accurate way to describe it. Yeah, <laughs> cauliflower mayo cheese corridor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rejected Mario Kart level. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> you had me at meth. <laughs> Which I know is not going to be a title, but I had to put it in there. <laughs> okay. And fear-based slider. I need to style it as F-E-A-R based <laughs> slider. All right. Uh, what do you have, Dennis? Got a boatload. Um, so I've got, first off, end times all the time. <laughs> uh, and what is 100 hours? Okay. Uh, I have one from Ben that I really like, which is one bully per month. <laughs> um, but I also had the cauliflower mayo and cheese corridor. <laughs> mm. I had I had pr parentheses at the end of it, the grossest possible casserole, as if it was like Birdman parentheses the unbearable likeness of. Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and then I also had I want to punch a Pokemon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like we've had something like that in the past, though. So. Okay. What do you have, Ben? I just have one, but no one said it. I have Pope Joe do, doing your shine job. <laughs> Pope Joe doing your... <laughs> I like that one the best. <laughs> uh, is that is that a line from from, from uh, Chronicles that of Riddick? Something... I forget. No, I was saying that when I was talking about it because I was very disgruntled that like the shine job was not done by Pope Joe. It yes. was done by the random voice in his head. Yeah. Okay. I like Pope Joe doing your sign shine job. The cauliflower <laughs> cauliflower maize mayo cheese corridor. A is impossible to say. It's yeah. also very long. <laughs> uh, and I I didn't really talk about Stardew Valley at all. And that is I related know. to Stardew yeah. Valley. So that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah, I like it. Uh, no, no objections. No objections. No sir. objections. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna go and play with my kitties so they get worn out before I go to bed. I'm <laughs> going to go eat foods. Okay. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. night. Have Take care, night. everyone. Bye. Bye.